National debt tops $26 trillion, Powell warns the deficit is now unsustainable. America's national debt has been ballooning at an exponential rate during the last 15 years. But it has exploded out of control after CV-19, adding around $1 trillion more of debt each passing month. On Tuesday, the national debt pushed above $26 trillion. That's greater than all the national debts of Japan, China, France, Germany, the UK, India, Australia, and Russia all combined. Just 35 days ago, the debt eclipsed $25 trillion. And 28 days before that, the national debt stood at a mere $24 million. The US national debt hit a new record high of $26 trillion last Tuesday on the 9th of June. In the last 63 days, we've increased the national debt more than $2 trillion. And if nothing changes, if we stay on the same trajectory, by the end of this fiscal year, the debt will be over $28 trillion, maybe pushing $29 trillion in national debt. Because our structural deficit this year is going to reach somewhere around $6 trillion. In other words, we will have spent $6 trillion more than we brought in in revenues. The ramifications of this kind of national debt are going to be catastrophic. The national debt will exceed the gross domestic product by about 110%. When that happens, we must confront it, we will have to face the ramifications of it. It took the nation 210 years to run the national debt up to $2 trillion. It took exactly two months and two days to add the most recent $2 trillion, Peter Schiff said in a recent tweet. The country's gross debt has now crossed the historic $26 trillion mark for the first time. This almost inconceivable number comes after several months of inflationary measures by the Federal Reserve, which has seen the dollar supply increase dramatically. Today Wednesday, 17th of June, a week later, it has jumped again to $65 billion. The US national debt was $25 trillion just last month in May, and $24 trillion in April. The tremendous increase in debt is due to the response to the CV-19 pandemic, which has only sped up the ongoing global economic crisis. Prior to CV-19, the US debt had already been growing exponentially for the last six-plus years. In October 2019, it was $23 trillion, in May 2019, it was $22 trillion. In March 2018, it was $21 trillion, September 2017, it was $20 trillion, February 2016, it was $19 trillion, Jan 2015, it was $18 trillion, and Jan 2014, it was $17 trillion. This is not healthy for our overall global economy. The US debt level is growing faster and faster every year, and now even every month. The exponential curve is getting steeper and steeper, if not already out of control, it soon will be. Meanwhile, the federal government just set a record for the biggest budget deficit in any fiscal year, with four months left to go. The US deficit soared to $1.9 trillion for the first eight months of the fiscal year. $3.7 trillion deficit per year is just over seven times the total of Sweden's GDP. In May, the gap between what the government spent and what it collected hit $424 billion, more than twice the level it was at one year ago. Revenues in May totaled $175 billion, down $58 billion from last year, the result of a decline in wages and overall economic activity. May's budget shortfall pushed the fiscal 2020 deficit to $1.9 trillion, according to the latest monthly U.S. Treasury Department statement. Eds Powell warned Congress during his semi-annual testimony that the U.S. budget deficit, which is expected to hit $3.7 trillion this year, is on an unsustainable path. The previous budget deficit record for any year was $1.4 trillion in the fiscal year of 2009. Before this year, the federal government had run deficits over $1 trillion in just four fiscal years, all during the Great Recession. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget estimated the debt would grow by $4 trillion this year. As interest payments rise, the government will either have to collect more taxes, cut spending, or print money. Remember that as interest rates increase, so does the nominal debt. Someone has to pay for the tax cuts, and guess what? It ain't gonna be the major stockholders who benefited out of it. If interest rates begin to rise, the cost of holding on to that debt becomes more expensive. If interest rates were to be at 4%, that debt would begin draining money from other resources. We will be paying over 400 billion just on interest on the debt with the ridiculously low interest rates. If interest rates were 3 to 5 percent, interest on the debt could become the largest expenditure. Debt eating up all of our income tax payments. No wonder our prosperity is declining. We really can't keep going in this way, it's unsustainable. And that just means the debt is growing faster than the economy, so debt to GDP is rising. That is, by definition, unsustainable. The Fed is largely to blame for the debt problem. They lower interest to boost housing and the stock market when wages and real growth has not happened for years. So, people take out higher loans. 
so people go into debt, spend less on other things, and wages are still low in comparison, so tax revenue is just as low. Hence the debt bomb. And Democrats and Republicans want to give away more free money. The debt load is expected to rise to 125% of GDP over the 20 years. That's higher than the US debt to GDP ratio during World War II. But perhaps the most striking aspect of the growing debt is the fact there really is no end in sight, and the US has no chance of ever paying off the debt. The national debt is a huge concern, not for our government, but for us. The Fed can just keep printing money and inflate the debt away. For us, though, it just makes things cost more, and our buying power dwindles to nothing. Look at Venezuela and Argentina. Think that is isolated to third world countries. We are on the same fiat monetary system. Just because other countries want to own our debt doesn't make our debt per dollar safe. One day that will change. China is circumventing the dollar by allowing countries to buy oil with yuan convertible to gold. Why would you buy a dying US dollar to buy oil when you can have a real asset like gold? The problem is that we are stuck in our debt-based economy. If we don't increase the debt, the economy collapses. The national debt is unplayable at this point. The socialist republicans will not stop until there is no more paper to print money. And the socialist democrats are worse. If this deficit spending continues, our US dollar will lose its preeminence as the world's trade currency. The USA has already intercepted oil trading on the high seas. Other countries already don't need the US dollar for their trade. When the dollar tanks, interest will have to be raised. And then, watch out housing and stock market and everything else. If you think that you've seen chaos lately, wait to see it when that happens. With a national debt of over 26 trillion and an annual budget deficit of a trillion dollars, some still claim we are winning. Despite the declining manufacturing data, ballooning national debt, and budget deficit. As interest rates go up, the cost of financing the national debt is also going to go up. The government wants inflation to pick up. But they will not increase the social security payments by anywhere near real inflation. In fact, over the last seven years buying power of your social security has gone down because of the inflation, the government won't talk about. If inflation starts to get away from this government treasury notes, bills and bonds might be the place to stick your money. Remember the 13 and 14% Nixon years. You could have picked up 30-year bonds with a 10%. We're lucky the US is the world's reserve currency, and get a major boost from this, where other countries approaching 100% debt to GDP, have trouble selling their debt, and interest rates go wild. But we will find ourselves in a major rate bind when the next recession hits, and more deficit stimulus spending is needed to jumpstart us out of it. Soon the world will pull our reserve currency status, and that is going to make some people very unhappy. We are flying blind here, just piling on deficits, and eventually, it is going to catch up, and it will be a catastrophe. Obama doubled the national debt in 8 years, adding 10 trillion, that's more debt than every other previous president combined. Trump has added about 6 trillion dollars to the national debt so far, despite his pledge to wipe it out in 8 years, and his campaigning on being the king of debt. Remember, in the primaries Trump stated, we need to reduce the national debt, and then said the great tax robbery from the middle and lower classes in favor of the rich, would bring in so much new tax income for the federal government, that it could begin to cut the national debt. I am still waiting. If you take away the 70 billion dollar tax break given to corporations, the net growth would be 1.8%. I have to conclude that Trump doesn't know what he is doing with the economy. Why do we need to spend 730 billion dollars a year on defense? If you add the $300 billion that NATO is spending, that is more than all military spending of all of the other countries of the world combined. However, I dispute the premise that any businessman needs to be president. The government is not a business. It does not produce anything. The money coming in is money taken from the hard work of citizens. We need someone with morals to be president. Someone who actually is concerned with how to spend our money. Yes, we need national defense, we need infrastructure, we need about 1000 other things as well. However, we do not need anything so bad to borrow money outside of natural disaster relief. Everything else can and should be planned for. If we can't afford something, then we can't have it. I want a Porsche but can't afford it, and am unwilling to give up a few other things to get it. It should be the same as the government. Businessmen don't think that way. They borrow and spend, and hopefully, the new product pays for what they borrowed. The government has no new product to sell. Conservatives claim government spending doesn't improve the economy unless it's corporate welfare for the military-industrial complex. The US outspends China by 6 times and Russia by 10 times in military spending. Trump touts increased spending on the military as one of his administration's top accomplishments. The only thing our government has always been good at is literally just spending money they don't have. We literally already pay so much in taxes. They need to cut spending. The defense budgets are completely out of control. 
but it has always been such a bendoggle for politicians. No politician is willing to speak the truth. Balancing the budget will take three things. Entitlement reform. Cut military spending. Increase tax revenue. Touching one of those three will get you primaried in either party. Fiscally responsible, GOP sent the deficit into the stratosphere. Haven't you heard, since electing the chosen one, debt is no longer an issue, we just default, easy cheesy lemon squeezy. Why would we pay off our debt when we can tell the contractors to take a hike? Of course, we'll still have to cut social security and cut Medicare. Somebody has to pay for the wealthy corporate welfare program. Support corruption, forsake your principles, edify the wealthy corporations at the expense of the US all. Default on the debt and watch the US dollar become worthless overnight. I hope Trump isn't that insane. The ruling banksters probably think that they are exempt from what happens when the dung hits the fan. They probably even have bunkers set up or compounds on remote islands. The problem is that even if you have a trillion dollars, you can't buy a can of tuna if there is none. Taxpayers are the proverbial goose that laid the golden egg. Trying to assume that the economy will just continue to grow to cover any rise in interest payments is the epitome of stupid. Personally, I hope we have a crash in the next couple of years so that we can finally have an adult discussion about federal spending. At some point, the public will demand higher interest rates for federal debt issued, which will invariably crowd out the stupid amounts of spending on pork barrel projects, special interest handouts, and the government contracts for defense. Shame on both Democrats and Republicans for this mess. A study of 20 developed countries who became over-indebted showed that all 20 had to eventually go through austerity to resolve the issue. It is also a fact that no country has been able to print its way out of debt. With the amount of debt we now have, we will already have to go through decades of austerity to pay it down. The longer we keep racking up the debt to avoid the pain, the longer the period of austerity we will have to go through. And the entire world will be having to go through this austerity, making it even worse. This is just common sense and should be recognized by anyone with a fully functioning brain. We need a real and huge spending cut program. Starting with the government subsidies, there are over 2200 of them. Eliminate all of them, that equates to about $1 trillion a year. Subsidies, which always interfere with the free marketplace, are essentially a slice of communism, the most failed economic system ever. Next, reduce government workers' salaries, pensions, no more full retirements at age 55 or under, wait until age 65 like the rest of us to earn full retirement benefits, and benefits to the equivalent of their counterparts in the private sector. Instead of pensions, put them on social security, and contribute a small percentage of their annual salaries annually to their IRAs. No overtime pay for management employees. Go to automatic income tax deductions similar to social security, no forms to fill out, enabling us to eliminate most of the IRS. Abolish the debt-ridden and job-killing Obamacare. Government regulators get a new job, instead of endlessly creating more job-killing regulations, they start off with a clean piece of paper, make a minimum of needed regulations, and eliminate the millions of regulations on the books now. The Fed is extending credit, for example, enabling more debt creation. They are allowing debtors to dig a deeper hole. Debt is a financial hole, and the first rule of holes is when you find yourself in one, stop digging. At some point, that debt will be defaulted on because the borrower becomes insolvent due to the collapse in the value of the collateral. It is very likely by then that the bond market falls apart and freezes, which means market interest rates rise rapidly and lending freezes. The Fed has ensured that even the responsible people who have done the right thing are going to be screwed too. Inflation is already a problem. Groceries costs are doubling. Some new cars cost as much as a house. Rent is at an all-time high. Health insurance for a family of three is $1,400 per month. These are big inflation numbers, but will be dwarfed by what continued monetization will do. People are rioting and looting because they are being left behind. If you artificially create inflation in prices while simultaneously creating hyperinflation in stocks, guess what happens? The non-investor class goes from middle to lower to peasants. And if I am a pissed off peasant and I see an unguarded AT&T store, I am taking a few iPhones because I am entitled to them. We have created a hell of our own making. The US has austerity for the poor, hungry, and homeless folks. We cut back on food stamps, housing subsidies, school lunch programs, halfway houses, mental health centers, drug addiction programs, early childhood intervention, clean water. But there is always a spare trillion for the military each year. Since 2009 the nation's private sector employers have been adding jobs for 132 straight months, 20.8 million since the Great Recession, and yet, nominal wage growth since the recovery officially began in mid-2009, has been low and flat. U.S. consumer debt is now above levels hit during the 2008 financial crisis. 
So despite the longest US economic expansion in history, the debt more than doubled, nominal wage growth during record low unemployment is low and flat, the interest rate didn't recover, and consumer debt is at record high level. Understand this, when Social Security just starts to take in less than what is received, which is soon, the debt will explode at an even faster rate. The debt is getting so big, soon, interest payments won't even be totally paid. Please protect your family by buying some physical gold and silver, even just 10% of your net worth. Bypass the future food lines and shortages, as people in rich countries before have done in times of national upheaval. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, leave me a comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell too. Thanks for watching till the end. Stay safe and healthy.